We should note that there's a lot of work to be done. President Obama tweeting uh, within the last day or so, expressions of sympathy aren't enough. It's time we do something about this. And President Obama seems focused on uh, further restrictions on, on access to guns, especially for people like this racist terrorist uh, who, whose name I'm not using. Um, but there will be a day. The mayor, Mayor Riley, when I interviewed him earlier, said they have nine people to bury first. Yeah, right. But there will be a day uh, that people start debating legislative prescriptions or beyond. Obviously, racism is not something that can be solved with legislation. Well, uh, th that's true. And frankly, the country is actually already united on some common sense reforms and background checks, all sorts of things. I'm not sure that those legislative reforms would necessarily have prevented what we just saw. And so on the one hand, there is this need to uh, tighten up some of these laws and to, to be smarter about how we uh, proceed. But I, I think at the end of the day, we also have to acknowledge that all the laws in the world are not going to uh, remove the stain of racism, won't necessarily deal with the mental health issues. And so it's a complex problem. And I, I hope that we don't get so hung up on uh, this reform or that reform. Let's just pass all the reforms we agree on. Frankly, Repu the majority of Republicans want some reforms, but let's, let's not take our eyes off the ball. What's happening out here today is equally important to get us to a better place. And Dr. Moore, uh, you, you're not, uh, you don't think that further restrictions on, on access to guns is necessarily the answer here? Well, I agree with Van. It, it would not have prevented what happened here right now. I think we can have that debate and uh, it's already a very fractious debate in American society. We can continue that, but I think there are deeper issues here and we need to get at them. And when uh, Douglas mentioned the fact that they're still having a Bible study Wednesday night, still inviting whosoever will may come, I think that gets at a key part of this. You know, Jesus talked about a priest and a Levite who passed by a man who was beaten on the side of the road. And Martin Luther King famously preached on that and said the reason they passed by wasn't just apathy, it was fear. They feared that they too would be attacked. Mm. We need this sort of moment of churches that will say, we are so confident in hope that we are not going to fear. We need white Americans who will say, we're not going to fear to be able to address these deep and systemic issues of racial injustice in our country. And if, if perfect love casts out fear, as the Bible tells us, then we ought to be able to come together and to work to do that. Uh, and, and Professor well, Brinkley, is, one of the things that, that this seems to have been a tipping point in terms of I have seen more conservatives, including Dr. Moore, talk about the need, in their view, to take down the Confederate flag at the state capitol. Obviously, the Confederate flag didn't cause this young man to do what he did. He was an evil racist, and he, he, he owns it. But... I have seen more conservatives say this. Uh, Ed Morrissey, a blogger with uh, uh, the Hot Air blog, said the Republican National Committee should push South Carolina's primary to the end of the process unless they take down the flag. Well, that's right. Mitt Romney's weighed in and, and has said, get rid of the flag. Um, it needs to come down. I think that's something tangible that might come out of all this. Gun control is a tough issue. President Obama went to the mat on it. it it's a divisive issue in the country. But the flag now, you know, it belongs in a museum. I think you can still have a Civil War um, memorial there on the grounds. But it's that flag yesterday of Confederate flag waving in the wind in the sun when all the other flags were at half mast. And other states have tried to deal responsibly with that flag. I think South Carolina has to let it go, and hopefully the legislature will do that in the coming days. Van Jones, the governor who put that up, Democratic Governor Fritz Hollings in 1961-1962, uh, um, a lot of Republicans say, why are Republicans getting dinged with this when Democrats, uh, a Democratic governor put the flag up, uh, and certainly there is no shortage of examples of Democrats uh, Robert Byrd, sure. senator, former member of the Ku Klux Klan. I think it was a grand Klegel of yeah. the Ku Klux Klan. I'm not comparing it at all, but but yeah. but even Governor Clinton, who Bill Clinton, who when he was a governor and when he was president, very few would doubt his commitment to racial justice. But even when he was governor, he took actions to honor the Confederacy. Yeah. Well, uh, first of all, I think that uh, both political parties have uh, played footsie with this for too long. Um, I, I want to say one thing though. I think we we don't want to rush past. I'm a Southerner. Uh, born in Tennessee, my family's from, from the South. Uh, there is a sense as a Southerner that we are put down, that we are looked down upon, that this is a region of the country. If you want to show somebody stupid, have them talk with a Southern accent on television. 
And so there is a sense of regional pride here that needs to be honored and need to be, needs to be respected. That flag, though, is the wrong symbol for regional pride. And so we've got to, at the one hand, honor the fact that there is a, a sense of aggrievement that we have as Southerners, but that flag, when you have neo-Nazis in Germany who are not allowed to fly the swastikas, who instead fly the Confederate flag, that means we need to, we need to put it in a museum. Uh, I don't think we should kick either, any one party because, as you said, even Bill Clinton played footsie with that flag, but it's time for the footsie to end. It's time to put that flag in a museum. Well, yeah, I don't know that he did anything with the flag, but he did honor the Confederacy in some way. Yeah. Dr. Moore, uh, it goes beyond the flag, of course. There is the Richard Nixon's Southern strategy, uh, the way to peel away working-class whites uh, by appealing to them on racial issues in many ways. And I think that has changed and certainly changed among my constituency of conservative evangelicals in the South. And so I, I think sometimes uh, presidential candidates and others, when they think of evangelicals, they think of some TV evangelists from the 1970s, and they don't recognize that conservative evangelicals are deeply committed to racial reconciliation and racial justice. They were marching with Martin Luther King. Well, yes, and, and right now committed to the fact that these are our brothers and sisters in Christ. This is my family over here across the street. And so uh, any using of race as a way to divide us as a wedge issue is not going to work with people who believe the Bible and who believe in Christ.